In this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know to get started with learning Japanese, as well as give you an overview of some of the milestones you can follow during your learning. I'll also be sharing some knowledge and tips that you absolutely must know when it comes to learning any language or even just starting long-term endeavors. This video is actually the first episode in a four-part video series on how to learn Japanese, and in the upcoming videos, I'll go into more detail on how to use the specific tools and resources mentioned throughout this video, and how to perform activities such as sentence mining and and immersion. I decided to part these topics out into separate videos because it's better to focus on exactly what you need to know right now to get started right away. The approach I'm going to be sharing in this video is going to be focusing on the long term, which means that it utilizes methods that will get you fluent in Japanese rather than fulfilling short term goals such as learning common phrases that you can use during a vacation to Japan. And this also means that at first it's going to be focusing heavily on understanding Japanese rather than speaking or writing it. If you still want to speak or write Japanese right away, way, you can still do so, but it's going to have a little catch to it, which I'll explain later in the video. So, before I get into exactly what you need to do to get started, I first want to explain what the reality of learning Japanese is actually like. Learning Japanese is not hard in the sense that it's not complicated. It's actually rather straightforward, especially with the methods I'll be sharing in this video. However, learning Japanese is hard in the sense that it will take a really long time, and by time, I mean hours spent on learning. And this is just something you cannot avoid. Generally speaking, it's going to take you at least 2 to 5,000 hours before you start reaching or reach some level of fluency, and by fluency, I mean at least 99% comprehension of Japanese when listening or reading. 99% comprehension means that out of 100 words you understand 99. However, native level comprehension is something like 99.99% or even higher on average in everyday situations and when consuming general media. And natives are usually only missing field specific vocabulary as well as uncommon words that you don't really hear in everyday life. And ideally, if your goal is to comfortably understand Japanese content without much of an issue, then something near this level is where you want to aim for. For. And in a way, it's also a prerequisite for reaching high levels of proficiency in your Japanese speaking and writing ability. More on outputting later, but as the final important point before I get into actually learning Japanese, I want to mention that because learning Japanese takes such a long time, it's highly likely that at one point throughout the journey, you're going to have issues with motivation. You might become demotivated, you might become disillusioned, you might start considering giving up and quitting, and that's entirely normal and completely fine. Almost everyone who has ever done anything that takes thousands of hours of effort has experienced some level of disillusionment and lack of motivation at some point during their journey. However, while that all might sound scary, you know, me telling you that learning Japanese is going to take oh so long and that you'll most likely have motivational issues and whatnot, ironically, if you are aware of these things and expect them, you're actually going to be way more equipped and prepared to push through these periods than someone who has no clue that they're coming and thought learning Japanese would only take 30 days. And obviously, that person is pretty likely to give up and quit learning when that happens, and it happened because they didn't have realistic expectations. The hardest part of learning Japanese is to not give up and to continue learning, and that's because learning a language is one of the most linear skills there is, in the sense that as long as you put in the hours, success is almost guaranteed, which is also why, in my honest opinion, most people should focus on consistency rather than efficiency. So essentially, it's better to use learning methods or resources that you actually enjoy using and can put up with, rather Better than something that someone says is more efficient, but you personally can't stand using. I mean, after all, if using a method that you don't like makes you quit learning, then obviously the 20% productivity boost is not going to be worth it. And the resources and methods I'll be sharing in this video are going to take all of this into consideration, so I think it's finally time to see how to actually learn some Japanese. Alright, so to get started with learning Japanese, I decided that it's a good idea to first just focus on getting started and to build a habit of daily learning. It's going to be extremely important that you do so, because soon we're going to start using three resources, and one of them absolutely requires you to use it every single day, so you wanna be prepared for that. So to build that habit of daily learning, we're going to be using something that's extremely easy to get started with and at least teaches us hiragana and gets us familiar with katakana during that period of, you know, one 
to two weeks. So ultimately, it doesn't really matter what you're going to be using for this, but personally, I recommend getting started with Duolingo or alternatively Lingo Deer. And the reason why is because they do make it extremely easy to get started and to learn a little bit every single day, and they do let you play around with the basics of the language. So like I said, your goal in the first one to two weeks is just going to be to learn every single day, even if it's only for five minutes. But you can already start using two other resources alongside if you feel like you're ready. One of those resources is going to be something that properly introduces the basic grammar and mechanics of the language that you should be aware of as a beginner. And for that, I recommend slowly reading through the Daykim's Guide to Learning Japanese. The reason I recommend it is because it's available online for completely free and it's also really easily digestible. And when you use this resource, what you should focus on is not on perfectly understanding the grammar yet, but instead on becoming aware of it and recognizing it. And the reason why is because, as a beginner, learning the most common Japanese grammar is essentially the same as learning the most common words. For example, it's extremely useful to have at least a basic understanding of the most common particles because you'll see them in almost every sentence, and the same goes for basic conjugations, conditionals, polite and casual forms, and so on. And the reason I put so much emphasis on having a basic understanding and being able to recognize the grammar is because honestly, I'll save you the time right now and say that you won't be able to understand most grammar in depth for a very long time, so I don't recommend reading multiple pages long explanations between the wa and ka particle, because even if you read all that stuff, you most likely still won't intuitively understand it, because language is not math, and it's not always consistent nor logical, and this is especially prevalent for Japanese, because it's such a different language compared to English. So, while most Japanese grammar is something that you can learn to recognize and have a basic understanding of, it will still stay pretty vague for a while, and that's completely fine, because eventually, you'll develop an intuitive understanding of that grammar through seeing it thousands upon thousands of times in various different contexts. And for that, you're going to be using immersion. And immersion is basically just learning a language through watching content in said language. Sometimes also known as input-based learning or comprehensible input, immersion is going to be one of the most valuable and important activities you'll be doing because it's basically the mortar between the stones that ties everything together. However, as someone who still remembers being a beginner, I know how difficult it can be to immerse when you literally can't understand anything, but because immersion is still very valuable at every level, I have a few special recommendations on how to tackle immersion even as a beginner. But I also have to mention that the better you get at the language, the more valuable and enjoyable immersion becomes, and the reason why is because one of the mechanics of immersion is that you can learn new concepts through context. And the more you can understand, the more context you have. Therefore, you're not only going to be learning more, but it's going to be easier, less tiring, and more entertaining as well. And eventually, if you get good enough, you can literally only learn through immersion without needing to use any other resources alongside. And ideally, this is the stage we want to reach as fast as possible, whilst also making sure that we actually get there. So clearly, the more we understand, the more enjoyable and valuable immersion becomes, so it would be nice if we could somehow increase our comprehension as quickly as we can. And well, the most direct way to increase our comprehension is to increase our vocabulary, so we should really put a lot of focus on learning new words, and to do that, we're going to be using a tool called Anki, and this is the tool that you're going to have to be using every single day. So Anki is a program that lets you create and use flashcards for whatever you want to learn, and the way you use it is that you're going to have a Japanese word and you'll try to correctly guess its reading and meaning. If you get them both correct, you hit good, and if you didn't, you hit again. In both cases, it automatically decides when it's going to show you that word again, and you just do that until you run out of your daily cards to review. And that's literally how simple it is. When you download Anki, it's not going to have any Japanese flashcards on it, because Anki itself has nothing to do with Japanese, so you actually have to download a Japanese deck for it. And I personally recommend using the Core 2 K6K deck because it's a good quality deck that consists of 6,000 common Japanese words with proper native audio. I'm going to go much more in depth about how to use Anki and the Core 2 K6K deck in an upcoming video about Anki, but since that video might take a while, here is a quick run through of how to get Anki properly set up. So install Anki and download the deck from the link I have provided in the description and open it. Then open the deck settings and set the number of new cards a day, anything between 5 to 20 depending on how many new words you want to learn each day. If you've never used Anki before, I don't really recommend taking more than 8 to 10 new cards a day because your daily reviews will start stacking up really quickly and Anki might suddenly become too much to handle. With around 10 new cards a day, after a few weeks Anki will most likely start taking you around 1 hour a day, which is a 
update to the ideal amount if you can keep up with it. Ok, back to the settings. Put the maximum reviews a day to some big number like 1000 and make sure the leech section is set to as tag only. And finally, scroll down to the complete bottom and set the new interval as 0.5. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the setup, and now you can start doing your daily reviews. So just do what I said before, aka try to get the reading and meaning of the Japanese word that's being shown correct, and if you did, hit good, and if you didn't, hit again. And make sure that you also sync your changes so you could use Anki on different devices such as your phone as well. And like I mentioned before, you really want to do Anki every single day, and the reason why is because if you don't, the reviews from the previous days are all going to stack up, and you're going to have way too many reviews to handle all all at once. Alright, so now that you've seen all the tools and resources that we're going to be using, let's see exactly what you have to do step by step to learn Japanese every day. So the first thing you have to do is to learn hiragana, and like I said before, you can use whatever you want for this, but I personally recommend something like Duolingo or Lingodeer because they're easy to get started with and they're also good for building a habit of learning every single day, which is something you wanna do before you start using Anki. Okay, so let's say a few days have passed and you're already starting to get pretty comfortable with hiragana. In which case, you can already start reading through the Day Kim's Guide to Learning Japanese. And I recommend moving through the book at your own pace, so you don't have to read it all at once and you should feel free to read the same chapters multiple times. If you're already starting to get really comfortable with hiragana and already have been learning daily for around a week, and if you feel confident that you can keep up daily learning, I'd say that this is the point where you can start using Anki. If you're still a bit unsure, you can wait until the second week or so, but generally the only real requirement for starting Anki is the ability to read hiragana. So let's just assume that you're going to be using Anki from this point forward, so let's see what our current Japanese routine actually looks like. So the most important thing is your daily Anki session. You should do all of your reviews and take 5 to 20 new cards every single day and this is most likely going to take you anywhere between 15 to 90 minutes, depending on how many new cards you take and how many reviews you have from previous days. Then we also have the Day Kim's Guide to Learning Japanese or some other textbook or resource that you decided to use. You don't need to use the textbook every single day, but at least reading a new chapter or reviewing an old one a few times per week would be pretty useful. You can also optionally keep on using the tool you used in the first few weeks like Duolingo or Lingodeer but I'd say that this is optional and you can already stop using them if you so please. In my opinion your time is better spent on immersion which is also something you should consider as a part of your routine. I have yet to explain exactly how to do immersion so I'm going to do that right now. So, first of all, let me just say that there actually aren't any rules for immersion, so you can immerse however you want, but I do have a few recommendations which I'd like to share. For example, as a beginner, I'd recommend doing regular immersion as well as something I like to call assisted immersion. So regular immersion is just listening, watching and reading Japanese content without using stuff like English subtitles. Looking up words is fine and can be very useful, but you should still focus on the Japanese as much as you can instead of using dictionary lookups as a form of subtitles without paying any attention to the Japanese itself. And assisted immersion is basically just watching Japanese content with English or whatever non-Japanese subtitles you want to use. When you do this, try to pay attention to common words and phrases as well as to the sounds of the language. And assisted immersion is not going to be as effective as regular immersion, but the point of it is just to have fun and to still make some Japanese gains while you're at it. In my opinion, you don't actually have to do nor consider assisted immersion as a part of your routine, but it's something fun you can do that still way better than doing nothing and it's going to prepare you for further unassisted immersion in the future and potentially even cultivate your interest towards the language. But I definitely recommend doing unassisted immersion for at least 30 minutes to an hour a week. You can of course do more if you want to. The more you do, the better, but unassisted immersion is rather taxing as a complete beginner and like I said before, immersion gets more valuable and enjoyable the better you get so it's fine to just immerse like 5 minutes a day in the beginning. And honestly, the 5 minutes of fully focused immersion is probably going to be more valuable than 5 minutes of Duolingo, which is why I still recommend that you actually do it. Alright, so now that we have the actual routine established, all there's left to do is to actually stick to it. And I'll say it again, if you're really busy and can't find the time for learning Japanese, just please try to at least do your daily Anki reviews and you can skip everything else for the day. But okay, so the next thing that we're going to be aiming for is to start sentence mining, which basically means making your own Anki cards through 
to your immersion. However, it's going to take a while before you reach the point where I personally recommend getting started with sentence mining because it requires at least some level of understanding of the fundamentals of Japanese before you know how to decide what sentences and words to actually make a card from. Not to mention, the core 2K6K deck does have 6000 useful words which will last you a good while. For example, I personally started actively sentence mining after I finished it, but you can already start earlier if you want to, for example at 2000 words or even at something like 3000 to 4000 words, but it's entirely up to you. If you still have new words to learn from the core 2K6K deck, you don't have to do sentence mining, but the reason sentence mining is so useful is because you'll be immersing while you do it and the words you'll be choosing to learn are personalized to you specifically from the content you like to immerse with. Speaking of sentence mining, I'd also like to introduce and thank the sponsor of this video, Migaku. Migaku is a language learning toolset that can boost the experience and value of your immersion based learning. There are many useful tools which Migaku offers, but my personal favorite is using Migaku for sentence mining, which I've been doing for around a month now and it's been a huge time saver. So before, I was always typing out the definitions for my Anki cards manually myself and I also had to manually record the audio from whatever I'm watching, which can be rather time consuming and frustrating, especially when mining from places like Netflix. But now, all I have to do is click one button and Mikaku automatically generates me an Anki card from the sentence I wanna mine, and it also includes the native audio from the show itself, which for me is really important. And what's exciting is that while Mikaku is already completely usable, they're actively working on adding new features and making the experience as polished as possible. And because the people who work on Mikaku are passionate and experienced language learners, I trust that it's going to be an extremely useful useful toolset for everyone looking to learn a language. Access to Migaku tools currently costs $5 per month, which in my opinion, if you're going to be spending your time on learning a language and doing stuff like sentence mining, it's a completely fair price and it's highly likely that it's going to be worth it. And if you use the ref link from the description of this video, you're not only going to be supporting my channel, but you'll also get one extra month for free on the purchase of your first month. So if you're interested in what Migaku has to offer, click on the link in the description below to learn more and once again, if you do sign up, you'll be supporting this channel, which I truly do appreciate, so thank you. Alright, so I'm going to go more in depth about sentence mining in some dedicated video about sentence mining coming out in the near future, but before I end this video, I still have a few topics which I'd really quickly like to cover, and one of them is outputting. So the way you should approach outputting, aka speaking or writing, kinda depends on your goals and what you prioritize. If you only care about understanding Japanese, you basically don't need to ever touch outputting because it's not necessary for comprehension. And the really good news is that actually, if you just get enough input, you'll eventually be able to output as well without having ever practiced it. However, the issue just is that it's going to take a really long time before your output becomes solid just through getting input. And the reason why is because while understanding Japanese mostly requires the ability to recognize information, outputting Japanese, however, requires not only that, but also the ability to recall that information. Input practice itself does actually develop your recall ability very well, but if you've never done any output practice before, it's likely that your recall ability is going to be very inconsistent. For example, you might be able to instantly and perfectly say a very complex sentence, but then suddenly fail even the simplest conjugations and have memory lapses for very common words. I made a video where I spoke a bit of Japanese pretty much for the first time after having done nothing but input practice for three years. And while I was able to express myself and be understood, very often I had awkward moments of silence because I was trying to recall some word or how to say something, but my mind just went completely blank. And honestly, I wouldn't necessarily say that I didn't know how to say those things, but my brain was just unable to present me that information on demand. So I'd say that there are two ways to improve your recall ability. One is to get more input, which takes a lot of time, and the other is to do actual output practice, which when you think about it, is basically direct recall practice. But the issue with output practice is that when you have not built a proper intuition for the language to getting enough immersion, you're going to be working on trying to recall information that just doesn't exist in your memory, which means that you also have to learn that new information at the same time, and because that information is so new, you're gonna have a really hard time just recognizing it, so 
obviously it's gonna be extra difficult to recall it as well. While as, if you already had a good entry of that information in your memory, all you have to do is just activate your ability to consistently recall it. And this is why it's rather overwhelming to do output practice as a complete beginner. You pretty much don't understand anything, you have no intuition for the language, and you don't have a solid memory of the words that you're going to be trying to practice recalling. Remember that input practice also trains your ability to recall, just not as directly nor consistently, but it will still save you a lot of time and effort over the long run. Which is why, unless you want to or need to output correctly as soon as possible, I recommend avoiding output practice as a beginner and just focusing on getting input and learning new words. There is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to do early output practice, but just realize that it's going to be so much easier and you're going to gain so much more value out of output practice when you're already pretty advanced at the language, and it's also going to be much more fun. But regardless, if you do decide to do output practice early on, perhaps you should use something like the Genki textbooks and workbooks, and it would be best if you worked with a native who can give you proper feedback, such as a teacher. And just as a quick note, if you wanna do handwriting, you most definitely need to actually practice it. Alright, so that pretty much concludes everything I wanted to say in this video, but before I end it, I really recommend watching my video on 10 tips related to motivation in language learning because it covers a lot of things which I feel are extremely useful to know even when you're just getting started. And I'd also like to mention that Japanese has a concept known as pitch accent. It's something that you don't really have to worry about for a very long time, but it's nice to be aware of its existence as soon as possible, so I recommend checking out this 10 minute video by Dogen. Other than that, make sure that you stay tuned for part 2 where I go more in depth about Anki and the core 2K6K deck, and if you like my videos, then I have a lot of videos documenting my own Japanese learning journey, and I'm still learning Japanese to this day, so expect more videos to come. So I wish you all the best of luck with learning Japanese, and remember that the journey is just as valuable as the destination.